everybody, it's Sam Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching today. I'm going to be sharing some of my thank you cards. The actual cards itself are just a normal top folding landscape card, really easy to do. But the main focus I wanted to share was using the We Are Memory Keepers alphabet, mini alphabet punch board. I have had it for a long time, I've had it over a year, and I did use it for my 2018 calendar, my large calendar, which I'll link in up here, just so you can see um, how else I've used it. Just seen there, I've got some glue on my nail, which is bugging me. Um, so yeah, so I just thought I would just show you these ones. Now I've already started doing a few, because I've got a few that I want to send out, but I just wanted to show you all the different variations, and then I've done a big thank and then I've die cut the U, which I've done separately, in the same colour card stock. So whatever the card base is, is what I've die cut the U in. And the papers that I've used, I'll share in a moment, because I've used two different paper packs. That one there, you can see, looks really nice. Catch me in the reflection there. Hello. <laughs> Love the rose gold, I think that looks really lovely. And that's what I'd done my 2019, my New Year's Eve card was with that feather background. I think that's one of my favorites. And there's a nice silver one there as well. And again, that's the gold and another rose gold one there. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. But like I said, I just wanted to really share the um, mini punch board. So the mirrored card stock is these ones here. So it's the Dovecraft Premium Mirrored Card and you've got the gold, the rose gold and the silver. I've used these a lot, they are really nice actually. Um, I did use them before I was on the design team. They're really thick, 240 GSM, so you can use them as a card base as well, as long as you score and burnish, but they would be nice as card bases. So again, all those links will be shared over on my blog. The papers I have used are these ones, so the Forever Free and the Mariposa. Really, really nice. Again, I've used the eight by eight because you actually use the full width of this for the cards. So it's a good way to use up. If you've got any eight by eight paper packs, then this card size is a good one for using those up. Um, okay, so this is what we're gonna be using. So this is the mini alphabet punch board by We Are Memory Keepers. And it is, it's a really handy little tool. And it's good if you are maybe starting off and you don't have any dies, or if you don't have any large alphabet dies, then this is great. And also if you just don't have dies, you don't do that kind of, you do card making with maybe decoupage and pre-cut things, this is quite nice to have as an addition because you don't need a die machine or anything for this. So I do like it. You also get the mini alphabet punch board book and through this it shows you how to make every single letter of the alphabet, including numbers, which are at the back as well. So again, I'm gonna talk you through what I've used for that one. And then I've got everything I need. So let's bring in, this here, I don't need to get all of that, pop that to one side. So the card itself is slightly different size to my usual, and I'll talk you through the envelope size you would need for it as well, but this is the card base. So it's a piece of eight by eight and a half, okay? And along the eight inch side, you just wanna score at four, and fold in half, and there you will have your top folding landscape card. Now for your mats and layers, so my bigger mat is using the gold mirrored cardstock here. And this piece measures eight and a quarter, take that one off, eight and a quarter by three and three quarters. So I'm just dropping down by quarter of an inch. And then this is um, from the Mariposa. So it's that really pretty floral print there and that's eight. So this is the full length of that eight by eight pack. So you're not losing any of the print. And then the width there is three and a half. And that is going to mat perfectly on top, giving you that really nice even border all the way around. There's something about a mirrored border, I said it before when I done that New Year's Eve card, it's just really, really nice. And then set against the green there, you can see you've got that same border, like so. Okay, so I'm gonna get all them stuck down in a minute. Now for the inside, I've got this cream piece and that measures the same as the gold. So you would need to do that again in cream or white, whatever you're using um, for, by three and three quarters by eight and a quarter. And I always say, if you're using a card stock and it maybe isn't very thick, cards when you're doing a lot of matte and layers are perfect because they create then the strength for your card. So although this is, this is a 216 GSM weight that I'm using for the card base, by the time I've added on that 240 GSM of that, you know, the gold, um, yeah, the gold mirrored card, and then this here, which again is a, is a nice thick, it's about 160 GSM, 
you've got already a really thick card and that isn't, I mean you can see them here anyway, they would stand on their own but they are, they're really really strong, um, nice solid cards. Then I've die cut this little U and I've die cut it three times and then just stuck them on top of each other so you can see there I've now got this thick little almost now like chipboard embellishment and that just sits nicely on the top. You could stamp um, the word U or you might you know obviously have to use this in a completely different way. I've also got some bows because I was playing around at the end and these are paper bows so this is this like um, I'll grab it in a minute actually and show you what it looks like but I've just made up these really cute little bows here and I don't know whether to add a bow or not so that's one there or even the I think the purple looks nice in that kind of contrast so I'm not going to add them and if you want to put in the comments to bow or not to bow <laughs> because I really don't know some of them I think it looks quite nice and then others I think actually there's so much going on with the lovely big letters that I don't know if it needs it so anyway I'm going to leave that down to you guys you can pop that in the comments then so that's everything for the card. So I'm now going to get rid of the scoreboard because I don't actually need that. So let's start talking through this here. Now, anything you make using this alphabet punch board, you will need two and a half by one and a half rectangles. Okay? Doesn't matter what you're making, that is the size that it will give you. This this is the size letters or numbers that it will give you. And these you can see fit perfectly into this little space here. Now it explains all of this in the book. I'm not going to go through it in too, too much detail because it is, believe it or not, it's very self-explanatory. I think sometimes when I've had We Are Memory Keepers products, which I do really like, some of them can be a bit overwhelming, but once you start to use them, it all kind of comes together. And I felt that way a little bit with this. When I first started looking through stuff, I thought, wow, this is actually quite... I thought hard but then actually when I started to do it it's not and you start to really kind of just just understand how it all comes together and you actually I find myself now not really using this so much so I'm doing the word thanks or thank because obviously I've got the U underneath so first of all I need to do a T so you just work your way through the book at the very beginning here it tells you what you need all right now you can do bigger and that will allow you to do a few other little tricks and stuff but it tells you here this is the size that you need which is that two and a half by one and a half which is what I've already got here okay so let's go down to the T again I know how to do this but I just want to show you these step-by-step -step directions and how you can understand them so here we have make sure I haven't got the glare bring it up a minute here so I have my rectangle here which is the rectangle here and it does the steps one two three four you just follow those numbers so here if I bring up the board actually what I'm going to do is just bring my camera down there we go you should get rid of that I'll lift it there we go so right it's telling you here you need to do this is your punch okay this is a punch this is your blade this is a punch and this is your kind of track for where you kind of cut into it a little bit more. Sorry, I'm really not doing very well here. There we go. Punch, punch, little cutter, and then, like I said, the tracks. So first of all, it's saying, and you've got here, if you can see, you've got a marker here, a little track, and it's got one, and you've got another little track there, and that's got two next to it. In the picture here, it's got a red line with a one just below it. And then it's highlighted this kind of D shape, which is in this here, because that is the shape that it cuts. So it cuts this D, okay? So it's telling you that you need to line your card, this left-hand side, with the number one track. So this one here. So if I pop that one in, like so, and punch. Okay, now it is quite a strong punch. You do need to put some force onto it. You may want to use your hand or the side of your hand. I know lots of people, you know, have different ways of doing things like that. Now, when I take it out, you can see there what it's done. And you want it to have, you know, gone off the edge there because we're going to be cutting that away in a minute. So that's the first punch that we've just created. Then when you go to step two, you'll see here it's gone grey in colour. That basically means you flip it over. Now there is a small arrow there as well. So you flip it over and you just want to make sure it now looks like this. So I can see that that D that I cut out before 
is now on my left hand side. And then again I'm going to pop it back in, lining it up with that number one and punch. And you can see now it's just a little bit attached, that doesn't matter, but that's what we've got. So if I flip it over, can you already see where the T shape is coming? Here's the top and then we're going to have that section there all cut away. So the next part now is it's moving into this area, so we're going to start playing around here now. So it's got that two bits that we've punched out in that orientation. So I'm going to lift up this and I'm going to pop it in there, pop it down, and you can see now that that resembles this here. Let's get that into focus. Okay. Now this is when we've got to do some cutting. Now if I bring it up, there are two red lines, one there and one there. You've got to cut down those two with the cutting tool, which is shown again in the image. So it does tell you everything. Once you get to grips and know what these things are, you know that this is a cutting section and that's what this area is. You know that this is a punch section along with this bit here as well. So with this one here, you've got a blade on the top there and then you've got a bottom little ball. And this is just the same as the X cut cutting circles. So those of you that have got that, it works exactly the same way. So this ball here is what we're gonna sit in the track and then allow that blade to cut. Now you can buy replacements for these as well. So I'm gonna pop this one in and there are three tracks. Sorry, there are two tracks. So you've got a bottom track and the, the top track. So I'm just gonna sit this in. I can just make sure I don't wanna get my head in like so. I've put it down so it's within that clear punched area and then you can feel it and you can hear it cut. And I'm gonna go up to the top track and cut down. If I lift this up, you can see already that one's come out and that one. Now, the one thing I would say with this is, I, th I guess with trimmers, guillotines, scissors, cutting by hand, sometimes your cutting may be out. So it does sometimes go off. And if you can see here, I've got two little bits there, but just with your snips, you can just very easily go in and just tidy that up. And again, just like so. Now the next part, it's telling you to turn it upside down and then trim off these bits hanging down. Now some people I've seen in tutorials actually like them hanging down, it gives a bit of character to your letter. But rather than do that, I just use my snips and just come a little bit higher up and just very neatly go in and cut that. Like so. This is why your snips are good for this, because you can get right in really carefully. Now I am using mirrored cardstock, I know, which isn't forgiving, so you do have to be careful. If you're using just normal cardstock, this would be much easier. But they have a really nice size two and a half tall letter T. Next, we're going to work on the H. So again, you grab your book. So again, you start off always down in this one here. Now sometimes you won't use this one at all. So already you see there for the T, we never even touch this area. But I will show you. I'm going to go through every letter, just because I think this is a nice way, you know, for me to share it with you and to have a nice product to show you at the end of the tutorial. So I've got my square, my rectangle, and again, we're going to pop it in like so. So last time we went in at that number one track like that, this time we're starting with it in like so. And then we're going to punch, it's got the red D there highlighted again. So punch that down and we've got that. Okay. Now it's got a little black arrow below telling me I just need to rotate that round. Okay. Pop it in and again punch. And now we've got this, which is then in step three, you can see it's the same, okay? So now we've got to pop it up into the tracks here, like so, pop that one down. So now I am like step three here. And then again, it's got two red highlighted parts, get my focus in, just there and there. So that's now where I need to cut. So again, I've got my little cutting tool, pop it in first of all on the bottom track and down and then the top track and down. Lift that up and again let's come away. I think I was slightly off there, I didn't put it in properly did I? But again this is when your snips come in handy and you can just doctor it once you've kind of got your shape. And I've seen some other people create really different things as well using these so again it doesn't, you don't just have to do words so I'm going to just line that one up 
so it's a bit even like so there we go then we're going to now use this one so here um what am i doing here oh i'm doing the h not an a see i'm already now i know what to do to make an a this is to make a H is the same as making an A, because you can imagine now there's an A, but we just round off those sides, so that's what we do afterwards. But now to finish the H, you've then got to flip it, pop it in that way, and then cut that one and that one. There we go. See, that one's come out perfect. Can you see? So I don't need to do anything with that one. So there's that. So now... Hopefully you're starting to see. So now I know that the A, if I go all the way back to the beginning, here we go, it's exactly the same. See there? It's exactly the same as doing the H, and then we go to this section here and round it. So punch, punch, pop that one in, and then I'm just going to cut down the bottom. So, take that out. See again, that's cut away perfectly. And now, using this one here, you pop it in. It's got a triangle bit, just like your envelope punch boards. That's what it's basically doing, but it's a nice, bigger, deeper um, curve. See there? So this is actually it's, it's another nice little punch just to have in your stash. And then again, up there. Now there's also a punch up the top here, but I'll show you that because we use that for the K at the end. So now I've got this A. So you can see now, my nice letters coming together and it is really nice you can make bunting with this all kinds of bits and pieces so let's pop that one there so now I just need to finish and do the N which is really really easy so again flick through um, there's the M now I changed mine because I just thought that looks a bit boring just looks like an upside down U but if you add don't do one of the curves they do both um, both curve pieces here I just do one and I think it gives you a more a better looking N so again popping it in like so and punch so we've just done this one here then it's telling me to go straight up into the track part here pop it in and again you can see here there's two red lines so pop this one in and the track, it won't let you put it in the wrong way. So don't worry thinking, oh, what happens if I haven't put it in right? It won't let you put the blade side down. So again, I've gone a little bit off there. But like you can see, some are perfect. And then the others do come a little bit um, slightly offset. But there you go. So it just looks like an arch. But if I now take, pop it in here and just do it on the right hand top corner... I think now it gives you more of a better N. All they've done in the book is they've then put that one in and punched that as well, but I actually prefer that like so. Okay. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Oh, one thing I would say is that it does do kind of a bit of a mix of upper and lower case. So I guess if you play around, you could make lower case um, letters. So... Um, some of them you could, it wouldn't allow you for all of them, but like that is actually a lowercase n, whereas you've got uppercase um, h and a, and I guess the t, you know, is as well. So, yeah, I would say if you're being really kind of scrutinising it, being a bit critical, that I think is maybe something they've missed on their part, because really the n should be going down and then up, just to kind of sit the same. But I'm just looking through now, and actually, yeah, it is all capitals, all the rest are capitals apart from that one I haven't taken any notice of it before but um, yeah and then you can see the U is actually just that upside down where they kept it but I think that looks better as an N that way I think it looks really kid like really babyish as just an arch so yeah I mean that's just one little I guess it's not really even a flaw but if you're really looking into it like that then yeah that's slightly odd but that's the only one now we just need to do the K. So again, let me just go across. So this one starts off a little bit different. So we're going in here, it's got to go on that track number two. So you're right underneath that punch. You can see that, so just make sure you really line it up. I think that's the thing, when I've been going through them, I'm doing it quite fast, so I've probably just been slightly out. Okay, so now I've got that. Now again, this one, it's gone gray and we've got to flip it over and turn it upside down. So you want it like so, and you can see now 
that D is facing the right way, whereas that way it's up that way, now it's down that way. Okay, and again you're lining it up, the red line is on the two and the D is highlighted, so it's telling you you've got a punch. So again, pop that in, like so, okay? Flip it over, obviously turn it on its side and you wanna make sure it's in now that orientation just there. This book's really shiny, so it's hitting my light, like so. Close that down, so now it looks like this, and it's telling me you've got two red lines, we're gonna cut here and here. So pop this one in. Like so, take that one out, just need to take this away a little bit. Okay, so that's what I've just cut now, like so. And then it's telling me I've got to rotate it like that. And then you want it to look like that. All you've got to do is make sure that you have it in the position for the next step. So now that's going in there and I'm cutting exactly the same as I did just before. It is a lovely sharp blade. See, that's just come out perfectly. So yeah, it is hit or miss. You can see now. And then we come to this part here. So if I turn it, this is what I've got. And this is now when you use this part. And when you pop it in, there are two circles here that are raised and the, the center of whatever your kind of um, letter or number will fit within that part. Punch it and it does this really nice, almost like, I guess if you put it that way, it's like a heart, a little kind of, yeah, dip there. I really like it. And again, I've used that on other projects before. Got a bit of glue there on that card. There we go. And there's your K. So now, there is my thank. And I think they're really nice. I do really like them. So yeah, it's a really, e it is easy to do. Like I could go through now and whiz through that much, much quicker because I do know how to, you know, you kind of, it's like a memory thing, isn't it? Once you've done it so many times, you do pick it up. But yeah, really, really handy. It's nice and small. It's not too heavy. And you do get one, two, three punches on it as well, which you can use for other projects. So let's come back up. Okay, so I will share all the links to this below, but you can just see them all there. Oh yeah, that's another thing you can do. Can you see here, if you wanna have a little kind of flag tail, if you pop down the end, I haven't got any scrap card at hand and I don't wanna do it on this one, but if I pop that in, if I bring it up here, there is these two tracks here. If you line that up in there, that's why these circles are here, because they will fit anyway. If you pop that in, so the circle's just around it and punch it, it will give you that cool little flag tail. So that's a decorative thing there. I think that's the only, yeah, that's just all your numbers. That's it, I could go on and on and on and I don't need to. So hopefully that has explained it and helped you a little bit. Cause some people have asked before and I've, I've actually forgot. So now I've done it for you. So hopefully yeah, it makes sense. So now we're gonna just stick all this down. So I had already put my double-sided tape on the back. So I'm just gonna stick those mats and layers on top of each other and just stick that one down like so okay so when i've stuck my letters down i have put them all on some foam adhesive so it's actually raised up there just again i just thought it was quite nice so i have got my little pads here and i've just cut them along the longer part in half like so and i found that this worked really well when i went to stick these down like so so now this fits just perfectly on here as well. I did kind of measure it beforehand, but it, you just have a very small, like one eighth of an inch gap between each letter and they do all fit on. You can probably see better with that one. Can you see? I've just got very small little gaps there between, but it's just enough. I think it works well. So start from the middle and work your way out. So I made sure, I'm just gonna burnish that because it's a little bit bouncy and I just wanna make sure. There we go, it's completely flat. So now I can just, I've come up about half an inch. Again, you just wanna make sure it's in the middle and then just kind of work from each side. Okay, and then just stick that one down. So again, just focusing on making sure that I've got it nice and even here. And again, make sure I've got that kind of one eighth of an inch gap and I've got that same, you know, space here. Stick that down like so. Then I'm gonna do the H, so I keep working out, but do it on each side, because that way, if you've made a mistake, you haven't got to change too much. So I'm gonna get these stuck down, and then just stick that K down, and I've got that nice, even border there. There you go. 
How nice is that? I just think they look really fun. Okay, so then I just need to stick this down here. The board keeps using, so I'm just going to pop just a little bit just on the O because it actually overlaps the other words there and letters. And I've just lined it up in the center and make sure it's right along the bottom of those letters there. Okay, and there you can see how nice that is. Like I said, I don't know whether to add the bows or not. I'm going to leave that for you guys to decide. It does look cute. I just really don't know. Anyway, so that's that bit done. Then if you want to do an envelope, so this is an eight and a half by four with the punch board. You just go along here and you've got eight and a half by four. So it's telling you you're going to need paper that's nine and seven eighths by nine and seven eighths. And your first score line will be at three and three eighths of an inch. Okay, so that's your envelopes that you will need for them. I've already got some pre-made ones, so I would just be using them. But yeah, so there you have it. I've got all my nice thank you cards ready now. And I've got a few others in my stash, some older ones, which I'll be sending out as well. But I really like it, and I think it's just a nice way to show off this fun little tool. It's just another little gadget. I do like gadgets. So, yeah, hope you've liked it. hope you've enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up if you have, and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.